Hey guys, so I have a new Bob Beck circuit I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this was the old magnetic pulsar that I made. And I made that about three years ago. I invented a circuit for it, and I've been giving the circuit away for free. It's a magnetic pulsar um, circuit. It's just... Um, a series of three different SCRs and then a MOSFET and they all work together and it creates kind of a neat automatic circuit that triggers based on voltage and on the left there's a small voltage generator and when the voltage reaches about 375 volts it actually triggers the circuit and then the two capacitors there are stored up with 375 volts and then they dump into a SCR and an SCR is just a hard switch and it allows a very large current to flow through it all at once so that's what an SCR does so that was the very first one and it uses a 18 gauge coil 2.5 millihenries uh, <clears throat> if you actually want to build it you can the circuit is free I've been posting links on my videos so you can download the circuit but if you want more information you'll want to get the whole Bob Beck uh, healing machines archive I have on my uh, store go to retali.com slash store and I've got the circuit diagram for this one in the healing machines ebook and then I'm also going to have the circuit diagram for this one and this is the new circuit and I wanted to address some issues that the old one had basically the old circuit is really good but it draws a lot of power and it's a somewhat crude circuit, so it wastes a lot of power. Other than that, it's a really good circuit. And then also, if you don't supply it with enough voltage from the power supply, it won't trigger. So I wanted to make something a little more sophisticated. And that's this circuit here. So this is an LM311 um, comparator chip. And the comparator is a, it's a small chip. It's kind of like a 555 timer, but it's designed specifically for an application like this. And what I mean is when the voltage reaches a certain point, then it activates the comparator and it uh, resets the circuit. The comparator is always measuring the voltage all the time. And it's waiting for the voltage to reach a certain level. And then it basically, um, it basically triggers once the voltage reaches a certain level in these two capacitors here. It's, it's actually, it's a complex circuit, but it's also very simple. So it's complex because there's hundreds of different ways you can build a circuit like this, and there's really no right or wrong way, but I wanted to address several issues. And one of the things that this circuit does is it actually automatically shuts the capacitors off and discharges them as soon as you shut it off. And it does that automatically, and I'll show you what I mean. It's pretty neat. Okay, so turn it on got the coil here this is a 16 gauge one pound coil I don't know how many turns the center hole is about seven eighths I would say and it's about probably an inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter maybe an inch and a quarter thickness and it weighs one pound and it's 16 gauge wire you can use 14 gauge wire but it would be you know quite a bit bigger but that's fine too that's the coil and it's pulsing right now you can hear it pulsing okay so the timing and the voltage are both adjustable you can run this super fast you can run it at 10 Hertz with the with the settings that it has or you can run it all the way to 44 seconds in between pulses so depending on what your application is you could make a very fast pulsar just by adjusting the potentiometers on the circuit board so I've got one here on the left for the voltage and then in the back in the back is the timing so there's a hundred K potentiometer in the back that potentiometer, you can put any potentiometer you want there and you can actually, you can raise the frequency, um, like I said, all the way to 44 seconds between pulses. So it's a very, very, um, 
basically a, a really uh, practical circuit that has a very wide range of operation. That's what I was really trying to do. So check this out. This is really neat. So no matter what part of the cycle the circuit is in, it doesn't matter. You shut it off and it actually discharges. So I'll show you again if you if you listen carefully. See it just dis it discharged. And it doesn't matter when you shut it off, it doesn't matter what part of the cycle it's on, it just automatically discharges if there's voltage in the capacitors. Really neat circuit, that way you avoid getting shocked because the capacitors do have 375 volts or or all the way up to 450 volts. It depends on what you're using. The capacitors are rated for 450 volts. The um, voltage generator right there, it's something I covered in my other videos. That's just a like a $10 um, high voltage generator from Hong Kong or China. And it's just a pre-made, prefab high voltage transformer. It's a, uh, a boost generator, a DC boost circuit, and it just boosts 12 volts up to 400 volts. And it's not a flyback transformer, it's just a regular pulsed transformer. So it runs at a very high frequency, and if you load it down, it will actually overheat. So you can't use it for charging like a battery on a car. You can't use it as a radiant charger, it won't work as a radiant charger. So. This is the only application you can really use that high voltage generator for, which is just charging an empty capacitor. So it charges up those two capacitors. The capacitors are actually 150 microfarads each. So I've got 300 um, microfarads and they're each rated at 450 volts and I've got those in parallel. Okay, so why is this circuit good? This circuit is really good because if you notice, there's no cooling fan. And I'll turn it back on. Now if you look at my old circuit, it's got a cooling fan. And also a huge heat sink, which looks really cool. And I love the circuit. But it uses a lot of power. So now I've got this new circuit. And it is unbelievable. It does not waste any power doesn't waste any power. The capacitors get warm and then the coil gets warm. Other than that, um, the parts might run just slightly above ambient, but that just tells you how good the circuit is. It's not wasting any power. Nothing is actually being stressed at all. So you could run this all day if you wanted to. And if you run it at a low frequency, the coil doesn't get very warm. If you were to run it at um, basically maximum frequency, which is as fast as the voltage generator can go, um, it does heat up the uh, coil. The coil will get hot and the capacitors will get hot and the small voltage generator will get hot. That small voltage generator is the only part that's really, um, basically this is as fast as you can run it if you don't want to stress that voltage generator because it's charging those capacitors up to 375 volts right now. So you think every time it cycles it has to uh, fully charge those and then it discharges and starts over. But this is a really good frequency, and so if you're using this for your body, what you do is you apply this to your body. It creates a, a very sharp, fast magnetic field. And whenever you have a fast changing magnetic field, it induces an electrical current in whatever is in the vicinity of that magnetic field. Anything that's conductive, um, that has a small amount of iron in it, or any kind of metal, and they say that human tissue, for whatever reason, actually produces electrical current when uh, struck by a fast magnetic field. It actually does pr produce a small electrical current. Bob Beck said to apply this to your like lymph nodes, to your organs, anywhere that there's not a significant amount of blood flow. Bob Beck did say that that was a vital process in his Bob Beck protocol was to use this magnetic pulser. I'll show you really quick, just it's kind of neat. So I'm not even going to touch the aluminum. I just want you to listen to it. Not even touching it. And so that aluminum is completely non-magnetic. I'm about a quarter inch away from it too. 
you can actually feel the coil push up away from it. Okay, so I've got it sitting on the aluminum. And that is really, really thin pop metal. Like just pop metal. You know that's completely non-magnetic. It's just like that thin aluminum, cast aluminum. So basically, that's not magnetic. But when you have a very fast changing magnetic field, it creates electrical induction. Well, I guess it's magnetic induction. And the magnetic induction... Um, creates currents inside the aluminum and the currents create their own magnetic field and then the aluminum becomes magnetized uh, temporarily and that's why you can hear it making a sound it's actually inducing electrical currents inside the aluminum pretty neat so what I'm gonna do is put this circuit in my healing machines ebook and this is one of the four things that Bob Beck recommended for clearing viruses out of your body. And he said, in his own words, he said that basically you can basically heal anything in your body with his four methods. So it was the shocker, the magnetic pulser, and then he had ozonated water, and then he had colloidal silver in water. And according to Bob Beck, he basically said he could fix any problem. So that was his own words again. I'm not a health expert at all, I'm just building these because they're fun to build. And if you're interested in building them, I've spent a lot of time on this circuit and I've tried to, if you want to download the circuit diagram from the Healing Machines ebook, if you wanted to build it, I'm going to put all the values and all the names of each part so you can actually copy this circuit exactly as I have it. And if you're interested, you can drop me an email, I can try to help you out with some pointers doesn't matter what kind of circuit board you use. This is just a generic circuit board. It's a Radio Shack circuit board. And you can still get those on eBay. Not sure what the part number is, but it's a generic Radio Shack circuit board. You could use any kind of circuit board, and it doesn't matter how you arrange the parts on there. You could use any capacitors. It doesn't matter how you put those on there either. And... You really only need a very small heat sink for the SCR, uh, which is the big thing on the back there. That's the SCR, but even that doesn't get very warm. So you don't really need a cooling fan or anything like that. I thought it was really neat. Um, I was really excited to show you guys. I haven't made any videos in a long time, so I thought this would be a good thing to share with you guys because it's something we, we kind of all need right now. Everybody needs to start researching healing and basically all the protocols that take care of your body and try to stimulate healing and it's important to learn all the different people who have given us information over the years and nobody knows if they were right or if they were telling the truth but Bob Beck seemed like a nice guy um, I mean he seemed very sincere and he was also a physicist and he definitely didn't seem like a stupid guy I mean he seemed like he really knew his stuff so I trust that what he was saying must have had some validity to it but again, I'm not an expert. I can't uh, make any claims at all. I wouldn't recommend that you use any of this stuff for healing or for your body. That's something that um, you would do at your own risk. But you might want to build it because you just never know. It might really come in handy. So hope you guys are uh, doing okay. And uh, thanks a lot for checking out my channel. And I'll try to make some more videos. I apologize for being gone so long.